other subjects. What are other subjects? Other subjects are things that can help me understand you. Things that can help you sell yourself. And I think this is the part that's very hard for people. It's easy to understand my education. I just know my education. It's easy for me to understand my work experience. But what's hard is, what is this other stuff? And the reason we have other is because we want to use that space at the bottom of your resume. Here's your work, here's your education, but there's still a little bit of space, especially if you're young and your work list is not very long. What do you do with that space? Just leave it empty? That seems like a wasted opportunity. Remember, your goal is to sell yourself, to get an interview. How do you sell yourself? You need to show me that you've got something that fits with the company. You've got to reinforce that idea of being positive, of having value. So what are some of these others? Well, others could be really anything, but what they really do is they show some kind of accomplishment. You've done something. And you know, it's not education. It's not education. It's not work experience. Something else. But it can help me understand you. It can help me show that you're somebody who's serious and has some skill. This can actually be kind of personal. It can just also be other. So you could call you call the section personal. You you could actually could have the section title personal. Some people just use this title, other. Some people use things like skills, capabilities, certificates, and you can use that as a title of the section. Licenses, accomplishments, personal affiliations or groups or clubs you belong to or unions. A personal affiliations and professional affiliations. So these could, personal could be like clubs that are kind of like hobbies, but professional could be something related to some kind of training or skill. I think it's often training or some kind of official group that you've joined. This section can even tell information about your hobbies and your interests. And this is what I'm really always talking about. Sell yourself. How do you sell yourself? by letting me know that the things you say you're interested in, the things you say you're good at, the skills you say you have, you really have, you really do. I'm not gonna give you a test, or if I do give you a test, it's just a small test. I don't have time to really give you a big test. So this is your chance to show me. Don't forget, everyone who applies for the job, everyone says they're good, everyone says they're smart, Nobody comes to a job and says, I'm stupid. Nobody comes to a job and says, I have no skill. They all say they have skill. Everyone says they can use a computer. Can you use a computer? Yeah, I can use a computer. Can you use Word? Yeah, I can use Microsoft Word. I'm good at Word. Okay, but that doesn't tell me anything that everyone, that is different from what everyone says. Everyone says that. So maybe you can use this section to tell me something about your hobbies and those hobbies are related, those hobbies reinforce, those hobbies show me that you really do have an interest in skill. For a very short resume, this helps you to fill out the resume. You know, the really horrible thing is you have a resume and it's A4. Uh, usually these days we don't even use paper, we just use the E document, right? We're always using this on an iPad or, or on a tablet, computer. But even so, it's still like A4 size. And then here's your education, here's your work experience, and then look, empty. Empty is very bad. Empty is very bad, because it means you're wasting your opportunity. It makes me cry that you're wasting your opportunity. I'm always asking applicants, tell me more, show me more, show me what you're good at. So here are some common words we use for the different sections in the resume. Remember we talked about the career objective, and I think this is something that should go right at the top. It could be called objective, or it could be called career objective. Of course, we have education, and we have experience. These are the very normal ones. We also call experience work experience. We could also call it professional experience. 
you know you can have another section called personal now personal doesn't mean your private personal information nobody wants your private information personal means let me tell you something about my life outside of work now it's not secret information but maybe it's some kind of clubs or some kind of cram school you go to or things you study on your own or a hobby you have that's personal but it's not secret personal so yeah be careful there professional affiliations organizations you've joined hobbies you have skills you have again tell me the detail it's really important to prove it i need to know the detail what are some of your abilities achievements maybe you've won some contests or you've You've tried to win some contests and you didn't win, but you learned something. That's good too. References, of course, is very normal towards the end. Capabilities and accomplishments. Things you've done in life that you think are important or helpful to help me understand who you are and what kind of employee you're going to be. Even though maybe you did not win a prize or you didn't get paid for it. That still is very useful. Some people, you know, they don't have work experience because maybe they volunteered to go do something. That's kind of like work, even though it's not being paid. They maybe went to another country. I've had students who've gone to overseas, to Africa, to other Asian countries, and they work on farms or they help educate young children. These are really super things to do. Very, very helpful to know. But it doesn't fit education. It doesn't fit work experience, maybe. It could go here in the bottom of your resume to help me know more about you. Sell yourself, remember, sell yourself. So what's a resume look like when it's all said and done, when it's all printed out? Well, it'll probably look something like this. We have at the very top of the resume, we have the contact information. And here we have this special case where we have present address and permanent address. What's that about? Present and permanent because present is where you live now and now may change right especially when you're looking for a job when you're looking for a job you're probably also moving maybe you just graduated so you can have an address now but maybe later it will not be your address so you can add a permanent address maybe that's your family address your parents this way the mail the information will not get lost now you may think Oh, I don't need that. Everybody uses email. Eh, yeah, that's true. But still, sometimes there's documents that need to be filled out, some forms that need to be completed. You should have an address. It is formal. And, um, you know, it helps us to keep contact with you just in case everything else doesn't work. Now look at the way this one's formatted. This person's made capital letters to the sections and underlined the sections with that double underline. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's okay. Again, remember, you can do any way you want. Any way you want. Everything's okay. But it must be easy to read. You must help the reader read it quickly and efficiently. And it must look professional. And each section must follow the same way every time. And that's what this person has done. And then inside education, we have the dates. And inside work experience, we have the dates. And here we have a date, 2016, and it's summer. So it was a summer job. So she wrote summer. And here's 2015, again, a summer job. And then over here is the company's name and then some details of the job. The next section is achievement and then special skills and then characteristics. Character very short and very detailed. They're not sentences. You see, there's no period on, the on these uh, lines. They're just a line. They're just some words to quickly help me understand you. They're not really whole sentences. It would be a little bit unusual to be writing whole sentences here. You do write whole sentences in your application letter or the cover letter, but not in the resume. The resume is made just for the facts to get to the information very, very quickly. Here's another example, and this is a very different design. In this design, you can see that the person has put everything in the center of the page, not on the left, not on the right, but down the center. Is that okay? Is that a good way to do it? Well, again, 
any way is a good way. Any way you think is good is good, as long as it's easy to read. Key point. So this looks interesting. And then each section has the title words all in capitals, which is nice. And then they have the dates. And then they have the details after the dates. So this person has put education first and then work experience second. Okay, so the resume or the CV or the data sheet or whatever you want to call it is made to be easy to read. The facts. Get to the facts quickly. You can do it any way you want, but you need to make sure it's easy to read. Good luck getting that interview.